Academic Physics, welcome back to the Simpkins Physics Corner today. A quick little hit on the metric system. All right, when we're talking about this article that we read about the Mars orbiter crashing, what happened tragically was that one team was using metric units and the other team was using American units. And so when we are doing a physics in class, we all want to make sure we're on the same page using the same units. The metric system is very convenient because it's all set up in factors of 10. Like how many feet are in a yard? Three. That's random. How many yards are in a mile? I don't know, because you got to like, look it up every time. Like, the metric system is everything in tens, right? My wife's doing some baking. Like, how many teaspoons are in tablespoons? These things don't make any sense. I don't know who came up with all that stuff. They all have interesting stories, but the metric system is all in units of ten. And so what I want you to remember is this terrible guy right here, King Henry, all right? Now, King Henry was a really, really bad guy. He just, he would get a wife and say, ah, not good enough, and just kill them and get another one. It was, it was really bad history. King Henry VIII, if you look him up, he's a terrible guy. But the thing that we can learn from Mr. King Henry is that he liked to indulge himself occasionally on a nice cold glass of chocolate milk. However, he had lactose intolerance and it would seriously up upset his tummy. And so he didn't usually drink chocolate milk, but sometimes he did. And if you're wondering if this story is made up, it absolutely is. But it's a helpful remember uh, or moniker to remember the setup of these standard metric units that we're going to most commonly see. Because if you remember, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk right? Because it upsets his tummy. He does like to have a nice cold glass every once in a while. That will help you remember the prefixes for our units as we set them up on this step ladder to help us convert quickly from one metric unit to the other. What do you mean? Look, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. There you go. Now, you may have heard it a different way. That's the way I like to phrase it there. Uh, but however you remember it, this is the order in which we will set up all of our units. So these are the big numbers up here. A kilo is really big, and then a milli is really small. Okay. And the easy way to convert metric units from one to the next is to say, what unit am I in, what unit am I going to, and how many steps and in what direction does it take me to get to the new unit? Let me show you what I mean. A thousand milligrams, all right? So that would mean we're starting right here for milli, a milli, a milli. And we want to go to grams. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I don't see grams on this step ladder, good observation. That's because if you see something that's just like grams, like down here, or if you see just liters, or if you see just meters with no prefix, no other letter before it, that is your basic unit. And so to go from milligrams to grams, you're going to go one, two, three places. And which way did I go? I went to the left. Well, what does that mean? That means if I want to take 1,000 milligrams and I want to convert it into grams, I have to take the decimal place three places to the left because that's how many uh, steps I had to go on my ladder. Now, how would I do that? I don't see a decimal in the number 1,000. Well, for those astute math observers, you would know that if you don't see a decimal, we can imply or we actually know that the decimal is located all the way to the right side of the number. So it would be here. And to get from 1,000 milligrams to grams, I'd have to go one, two, three places, and that would be my final destination for my decimal place. And so 1,000 milligrams would equal one gram. All right, let's look at another example. Let's go from 160 centimeters into millimeters, all right? So let me clean this up a little bit for you here. I'm gonna get rid of my annotations so we can clean things up. And let's see, good, I can draw right here. Here we go, let's draw with a different color so we can do a different example here. If we wanna go from centimeters to millimeters, right? We wanna go from here and we wanna convert it to millimeters. Well, I'm taking one step to the right. And so how would that look? Well, 160 centimeters, the decimal is on the right. I have to take a step to the right. Well, that just steps me into nowhere. What do I do with that? Some of you have seen this before. You know that anytime you have a gap, you fill it in with a zero. So what does our final answer look like? 160 centimeters would equal 1,600 millimeters. All right, let's do one more example to see how this little decimal swing trick works. Let's go from kilometers to meters for this one. So if I have 14 kilometers and I want to go to meters, I would start up here at kilometers. Remember meters, if it doesn't have a prefix, that's your base unit. So I'd have to go one, two, three places to the right. And so let's go ahead and apply that strategy. If I have 14 kilometers and I don't see the decimal point, we can infer that it's on the right side of the number. And to get to meters, I have to go one, two, three places to the right with that decimal place. And the reason why I do these little Humpty Dumpties is because it helps me count or remember how many zeros I need to fill it in with. And my decimal would end there. So what does that mean? That means that 14 kilometers is equal to 14,000 meters. And that makes a lot of sense if you think about it. In physics class, a meter stick is about, you know, a little bit, it's about half of my arm span or so. 
And if you say, hey, I'm going to go run 14 kilometers, you would need a lot of meter sticks to add up to that, right? So <clears throat> always keep in mind the practical things like, okay, kilometers I know are huge and millimeters I know are small. That'll help you check your answer. But this is how we use the metric system or this moniker here of King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk to help us remember how this ladder is set up. And then that's going to help us go from one unit to the next. So what I want you guys to do for today for a quick practice, just to make sure you understand this, is to try these conversions out down here. You can use this ladder method as a reference. And then I will post the answer key for you guys as well. So have fun exercising your muscles in the metric system. Until next time, this is Mr. Simpkins in the Simpkins Physics Corner.